What's the most fricked up thing someone has told you about themselves after barely getting to know them? I visited a coffee shop for the first time on holiday. Barista commented on my tattoos. I said thank you. She told me she's not allowed to get tattoos but she cuts herself to enjoy the pain and that's nearly the same thing. I found a different coffee shop for the rest of the holiday. I don't blame you for noping out of that shop. Especially since this woman clearly had no boundaries and probably would have latched onto you merely because she thought you two shared something special. Ugh. LOL. Temporary co-worker tells me she was kidnapped, raped and beaten by her ex-husband. Burned with cigarettes. Hands shoved in the garbage disposal. Head beaten with a hammer. The incident resulted in a baby she somehow still has. And they are not even divorced cause he won't sign the divorce papers. I work in a small town gas station. I'm trying to check out customers and she's reciting a true crime episode to me. The conversation started with mascara recommendations. It was the craziest thing I've ever heard. It's possible to get a divorce without him signing if in an abusive marriage. I would imagine there are victim services of some kind that would help her out, assuming she was willing to accept the help. Chatted with a huge middle-aged dude in a bar once who after about 2 minutes, told me that he had been in prison for bashing his dad's head in with a hammer. His dad used to beat his mom and one day he'd had enough of it. When I was 19 and home for the weekend my dad decided to hit my mom, like he did when I was little. I lost it and went after him with a 2x4. He ended up driving off and calling later to threaten to shoot himself. I laughed. Stuck driving a co-worker out to a remote gas plant to do a system install. He was kinda fricked up but assumed it was just socially awkward IT way. Nope. He starts telling me about him and his dad collecting Nazi memorabilia and how proud he was of his German grandparents. Trying to make other small talk and he would just trail off answering questions and start singing to himself. Thought for sure I'd end up on the news and a manhunt would be conducted. Second best story. Met the neighbor right after we moved in and she started telling me about them wanting another kid but doing the deed was hard because she was overweight and had bad knees and it just made it difficult. I'm a guy who never met her and have my kids playing mere feet away so I can't call her batchet crazy. A comma my kids playing mere feet away so I can't call her batchet crazy. We call it bat poop silly. A customer explained to me the benefits of a coffee enema to heal everything from my acne to preventing cancer. I couldn't get her to leave me alone for an hour because it was dead and no one was there to help. I worked for a skincare counter in a department store. Like if you don't need my products because cleaning your butt with coffee fixes it, why are you here? But she went on about how she started her kids on these and did their enemas until they could do theirs on their own. What? Then she also grabbed my hands and kept saying promise me you'll try it. Promise me. She left after I promised. No, I didn't try it. A guy told me during our first shift that his youngest daughter was suicidal. His eldest daughter's boyfriend was terribly abusive, and his wife was sleeping with someone at her work. Apparently he'd just gotten out of jail after flying home from out of state, beating the crap out of his daughter's boyfriend, his brothers, and his dad. Driving to his wife's work and beating the crap out of her boyfriend. Then driving to the hospital to hold his daughter's hand after she had attempted suicide until the cops arrived to arrest him for aggravated assault. Had to get my picture taken for a visa so went to a local photography shop that took the pictures and printed them out for you right there. I had been talking to the guy as he worked on other people's photos and when I finally got my picture taken he started opening up about his family. Apparently his son was killed 3 years ago in a car accident and he was telling me how much I reminded him of his son. Going to school for engineering, first generation college student etc. The son was killed in his senior year so didn't even get to graduate, he even showed me pictures it was heartbreaking. To make things worse he said he had a degenerative muscular disease and doctors had given him about 2-3 years before he'd be bedridden. He then went on to say his daughter was taking care of him and how she isn't married yet and deserves to live a young person's life and man. It really put into perspective how bad some people have it. I still think about that guy to this day and hope he's doing well. I made the unfortunate mistake of inviting my old neighbor over when we were having a party. He had like 5 gyms in my kitchen and confessed to an unsolved murder in Nunavut, Canada. He's in jail. He must have just wanted to finally confess to someone and needed a drink to do so. How crazy. Would like more details. 
hitchhiking through New Zealand. I got picked up by a semi driver, awesome guy, but an hour into the drive started unloading every bit of personal information he could. How he's cheated on his wife, screwed the company out of money, stolen items. It was like I was a priest in a confession booth. When I asked him why he told me all of that, he said it's been eating him up inside for years and telling me helped get it off of his chest. He said I had no idea who he or anyone he knew was, so it felt like I was the perfect person to unload on. I mean you can't argue with his logic, you all will probably never see each other again so he's safe from repercussions. Used to work at a ski resort and was working in a different area than I normally work. Well this lady who I was working with found out I was slightly acquainted with her fiancé and proceeded to tell me all about how his family hates her and is mean to her and all about his substance abuse issues. I don't remember all the details because it was a few years ago but she unloaded on me with every issue of her relationship and I'm like I'm just here to work. I didn't really even know her fiancé. I avoided that lady after that. Ski resorts have different rules than real life. A girl I was dating mentioned that her dad was sleeping with her older sister, and that she would soon be next. That made me the competition. Started to work with my co-worker he kept falling asleep on me. On day 2 I asked him if he was okay because he constantly falls asleep. He tells me he has insomnia, makes sense I feel bad for the guy. An hour goes by he nods off again, this is scary cause he's a driver I yell wake up. He jolts awake goes back to driving apologizes, then begins telling me what happened and why he can't sleep. About 10 years ago he was going through a divorce, apparently his daughter's bedroom got broken into and she was raped and beaten nearly to death at age 15. The assailant went to the mother's bedroom and murdered her. A couple of weeks later they found the guy while he, the father, was taking care of his daughter. Shot multiple times and murdered in a random town nearby somewhere in a ditch. He goes on to say the cops arrested him right away since he was the number one suspect, questioning him about the situation, to which he had no clue to what they were going on about. He had to get a labor and after a few days of questioning they had to release him because they had no evidence that it was him. His voice changed when he told me this and while he said he was a friend of the family's. I wonder what happened to him. Guess we will never know but they got nothing on me. In a more menacing voice. After a long pause it seemed like he caught himself and turned to me and said back in his original fungi sweet voice but I wasn't anywhere near so I don't know how they did suspect me for it 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 I just got chills and thought to myself, holy frick you did it didn't you? That's more sad than anything. Poor guy had his whole life ruined and now probably suffers from guilt for murdering the guy moved to a neighborhood not too long ago first person I meet was an older woman in her 50s. She told me all about her drug use and how sometimes she ends up outside naked and asked if I would help her back inside and put clothes on her. This was all in 5 minutes of saying hello. New roommate told me her current boyfriend got kicked out of college for sexual assault and was under investigation for another case of sexual assault. Wanted my opinion about it within like 2 hours or meeting completely disregarded that my opinion was run. Everyone keeps saying that, but I don't think any of you understand how complicated this is. My favorite ever was some stranger outside a bar. Seemed normal enough until she said my husband and I used to do M, but we don't anymore. I applauded her on this and then she followed up with yeah, now we only have M weekends. Reminds me of Mitch Hedberg. I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to too. Yesterday I was walking with a friend of a friend after my friend left me. He started telling me benefits of Nofrop and his pervertness out of nowhere. Like telling me how it had affected him and his life personally. He told me how he masturbated in a train sitting with all his friends in such a way nobody noticed. Then he goes on telling me how he asked his father for help. For which his father asked him to drink buttermilk because apparently it reduces the addiction. Comma such a way nobody noticed. In such a way nobody mentioned it. Started talking to a homeless guy outside of the grocery store. Learned he was fresh out of prison for shooting his brother who had slept with his ex-wife. I'm not saying I support his decision. But I'm not saying I don't understand his reaction. Sat on an Amtrak across from a very sweet older man. Who within 20 minutes was telling me about the purpose of his trip to Maryland. To meet his biological father, 
who he had discovered via 23andMe, to discuss changing his last name, which was the condition of becoming being the sole inheritor of his father's estate, and that he was feeling a little guilty about that because his three half-sisters would be excluded from their father's will because he finally had a legacy. Woof. He disembarked 20 minutes later, and I have thought about it constantly for the following four years. The patriarchy is a hella drug. Worked in a catalog store and sold a middle-aged lady a dictaphone after she sheepishly asked me if there was something she could use to record people without them knowing. It was weird, but who am I to judge? I just work the tills and suggest the items. However she then decides to tell me she needs it, because she's being bullied or harassed in her home. So she buys the dictaphone and I think nothing of it. On my next shift, she is back and undemanding to speak to me about the device. First words out her mouth are should there already be voices on it. I was kind of weirded out and surprised to hear that the device had already been used. But then she leans across the counter and suddenly begins telling me, in whisper tone, that she is being attacked by spirits in her home and she needs proof. She plays the dictaphone without being prompted to do so. Anyway there's nothing ghostly on it, just some mundane household sounds and EastEnders, a British soap opera. She became quite fond of me. Came in repeatedly to tell me about the ghosts, but it just seemed so crazy that within like two shifts she had unloaded all her delusions. She even asked to know where I had went after moving away. My old colleagues obviously didn't tell her. She was a harmless lady, just a bit odd. I was buying an AC at Home Depot during Black Friday sales. There were none on the shelf so an employee was helping me get the display model. He carried it all the way to the cashier for me. I thanked him and wished him a happy holiday season. A shadow crossed his face and he looked me straight in the eye and told me he killed someone a year ago during the holidays. He ran a man over and killed him. It was ruled an accident but he said he won't ever celebrate a holiday again because of that. He's probably still racked with guilt and doesn't know how to let it out. I feel sorry for him, considering it was an accident. Oh, I have another one. Girl I worked with but didn't really know beyond her name. Told me she liked to hold her boyfriend's penis and do the aiming for him when he took a pee. That's fun. After like a few hours of meeting a new co-worker at my job one of the first things she told me was how much she hated her husband and how like twice a day she tells him how much she wants to divorce him. She also showed me a picture of her ex-husband's and laughed manically as she told me how she never loved him and that she just married him to spite his mom. I've met her husband she's with now and he's super cool and makes literally 5k a month at his job so I was genuinely confused and terrified to work with her after that. For some, the world is not enough. We were 17, first year of uni, and I had known the guy for a week or two tops. Out of freaking nowhere, he tells me he had a kink for getting farted in the face by girls. I pee myself laughing and we became good friends for a while. This happened to my wife. We had just moved into a new house and the lady next door came over to introduce herself to my wife. As she was talking she informed my wife that her husband was mad at her because she had farted when he was going down on her. I think I would have a difficult time not busting out laughing if someone told me this. And remembering it every time I saw her. I was a teenager working retail and there was a fidgety older woman I worked with. I was always very nice to her. But she was just a co-worker at the end of the day. One day she told me about her grandpa molesting her when she was young. Her parents didn't believe her, so it continued until he died. She said she was glad he died and was happy at his funeral. I really had no clue what to say since this was out of nowhere. I just said I was really sorry it had happened. Felt really bad for her because I could tell it still really bothered her. I imagine that the pain and the memory lasts a lifetime for most victims. I was doing a service call at a house and just making smaller talk when the owner mentioned out of the blue that she's married to her uncle. I've been there twice, and both times they felt the need to tell me. It's kinda weird. At a work Christmas party, it was mentioned we were going to Vancouver for a meeting next month. New guy is so excited he's losing his mind. He proceeded to tell us about how they have the best massage, happy ending kind, pollers. He went on and on about how great they were last time he went, he also told us about etiquette and what to expect. He was married with 3 kids, and all I could think of, is what kind of crap is he not telling me if he is this open about this. 
I'm laughing my butt off at the thought of a guy telling everyone how excited he is to be getting a handy J and explaining the process like it's the culture of Vancouver to get beaten off. Lady at work started telling me about land she owned in another state that is not part of America. She then started talking about how every American is a bond to the government, and your SSN is just your bond number. Wealthy people own those bonds and own you. She started naming off prices of bonds based off people's races and genders. This was all said after I simply asked her what she was doing with her long weekend coming up. Weirdly enough I had a do tell me all this unprompted during my first night shift at Dollar General. All I asked was if he wanted his change. That he broke in and beat the crap out of a guy who raped his daughter. Put the guy in the hospital. With a baseball bat. I totally get why he did it but I have no idea why he thought it was a good story to tell a new coworker. Comma I have no idea why he thought it was a good story to tell a new coworker. He took one look at you and was like. This looks like a guy who would rape my daughter. I'd better not let him get any ideas. I had to stay late when I was a manager as one of the female employee's parents were running late. She broke down to me about how she had been sexually abused by her best friend's father and that he had been doing it to her best friend for years. He was in jail after he did it to her as she reported him and sadly the daughter hated her for turning in her father as she thought it was normal behavior. She had only been working there for a few weeks at this point and we had probably only worked together a handful of times so I really didn't know her that well yet but I think she just needed someone to know she was struggling with it and someone to tell her it wasn't her fault and what he did was wrong. Girl at the gym told me she was in an unhappy marriage and never loved her husband and as soon as the kids finished school she was leaving him. Pretty sure I didn't even know her name. Some people seem like Skyrim NPCs tbh. Just telling you their life story for no reason. This guy I'd worked with for a couple days told me he had been meeting older men at a state park and having sex for money. We worked at an upscale deli. Hustler out there slinging salami day and night. When I used to work in construction I was on a project with this old guy that told me he was once accused of raping his daughter but after an investigation was conducted it turned out it was his brother who committed the crime. Way too much information. Had another idiot showing everyone pictures on his phone of him and his stripper wife having a threesome. We can't say I miss the trades. At work. Me. Hey new guy. Nice to meet you. New guy. Yeah you too. Check out this picture of a dude in a coffin. That's my nephew. He was killed in a drive-by last month. Me. Lem show you where the coffee maker is. When I was around 10, I lived beside this weird family. The little girl was probably 4 or 5, always clinging to me anytime we were outside. She talked incessantly and always wanted to hang out with me, asking to come into my house. She annoyed me so badly but she was really sweet and excited about everything. One day she tells me, do you ever naked wrestle with your dad? I told her that's really weird and no, I don't even know what that means. She then tells me she and her dad and brother naked wrestle a lot. Forgive me but I was 10, I had no idea what the frick I was being told. I still think about that to this day. The guilt eats at me. I wish I had understood more and told someone. I also had a classmate in high school I'd give rides to and from school so she wouldn't have to make her dad do it. After we graduated, I saw her working at the mall. She then told me her dad used to molest her and she was finally able to see a therapist and work through it. When someone says these things happen more often than we realize, they are not wrong. I have had years and years of training on signs of this type of abuse and it will forever break my heart and make me so angry. It's unfathomable. I remember being in first grade when I asked my friend a similar question about naked wrestling. I had no idea it wasn't normal until I saw the look and response of my friend. Don't feel bad or guilty. I know this is easier said than done. I do not blame the person I spoke to about it. There is no way a child should be expected to understand a situation like that. I was 11 years old at camp. I was a quiet girl who just wanted to read in her corner, who didn't want to be there. I struggled to make friends but I wasn't really trying anyway. So, this loud. Talkative girl befriended me. She cursed every other word and she was IDK. Rough around the edges. I was a bit curious about her, but I was trying to shake her off during the first day. She was sometimes insulting and quite abrasive. Anyway, on the second day, 
She spent most of the day describing how her mother was abusing her and her siblings. How she had tried getting away through the window. How child protective services didn't do anything. How her dad was every bit just as bad so it was a relief he was gone. How she rarely ate enough until her mom would deprive her of supper every other day. How she had two younger siblings so she took the worst of the abuse to protect them. I remember being completely shaken by her story. I come from a loving family with healthy parents and it was the first time I even considered that a parent would harm their child this way. I remember telling my parents that night and I don't think anything ever came of it. When I was in rehab, my roommate whom was only 18 told me that she had been stripping and selling herself since she was 11 to get her dope. And that you can connect the dots of the abscess scars on her arm. She'd continually shoot up in a spot till she got an abscess and then she'd just cut it out of her arm herself. Being an ex-H addict myself, abscesses weren't anything new but the fact that this tiny little 18 year old girl, she couldn't have weighed more than 90 pounds, had 9 abscess scars on just one arm. I just couldn't even wrap my head around that. You hear some of the worst freaking stories ever in rehab. And I've been to 10 during my entire addiction. But this was one of the worst I had ever heard. Especially because she was so nice and had such an innocent way about her. It was heartbreaking. An 11 year old doesn't start dope on her own. There's worse backstory there. I started working at a flower shop as a delivery driver and on the very first day of training the woman I was paired with proceeded to tell me all about how she was still processing her parents deaths. Went into great detail. Explained the stresses of funeral arrangements and how she had to dress her mother for the viewing because her siblings weren't able to handle it. Even told me about a text message she believed she had gotten from her mother after she passed. I did my best to be sympathetic but we were out on a 4 hour delivery drive and she definitely took the opportunity of a captive audience to dump a serious amount of baggage. At a certain point I just didn't know what to say anymore. First time meeting a lady while I was bartending. One drinking, she proceeds to tell me that her husband cheated on her so she cheated on him with a young Jehovah Witness that had showed up at her front door. She ended up getting knocked up by the Jehovah Witness and now has a child out of wedlock. I literally never even got her name. Hired an older plumber, in his 60s, at the company I worked at when I was an apprentice and I got put with him during his first week. Within 10 minutes of meeting him the small talk topic of his choice was that his mail order Thai wife had died a few months ago and that he's been plowing through prostitutes and he recommends hiring a Cambodian woman as they are by far the best in bed. I am extremely concerned about the circumstances of the Thai woman's death. A little old lady probably about 90 years old was a regular in the mobile phone, cell phone, shop I worked in when I was younger. I always took the time to look after her helper with her phone. Anyway one day she tells me that she helped her husband kill himself as he was very ill and didn't want to go on. She starts crying and said she'd never told anyone that and it's been a huge weight off her shoulders. Another time I bumped into a guy who I'd only ever met once before and pretty briefly. I say hi, how's it going and he tells me the intricate details of his life including his teenage sister's drug addiction leading to her suicide. First impression of a Dungeons and Dragons group. DM talks about how he went to a sleepover which was basically an orgy and had someone get a full bottle of Febreze sprayed up his butt. A lot of our girl story stories could go here, I feel. First session with a new massage therapist. Me, relaxing and enjoying the massage. Her, did you know vaccines have bits of aborted fetuses in them? Me, her. They don't want people to know, but there was an undercover video. Me. Why would anyone put aborted fetus parts in a vaccine? Her. It's a preservative. Me. At a complete loss for words. Saying the first thing that comes into my mind after what the actual frick. That hardly seems cost effective. Her. Yeah. I dunno. Maybe I heard it wrong. She also told me all about her prior age addiction. Bouts of homelessness. Abusive previous marriage. And then tried to sell me some kind of $12,000 magnetic mat to lay on to heal all your things that need healing. Massage therapists should probably just shut up and let you enjoy your 60 minutes of expensive peace. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.